I really got to figure out a way to do that where I don't have to hold my breath. <sighs> <laughs> I just don't want to breathe. You know, it'll be recorded. I could mute myself, but I have forgot to start the stream deck up beforehand. Anyway, hey, hello, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> it's me, Chris, and Nate. And you're here for another episode of Space Time Talko. This is, what, the, the, the second one of the new year? Second one of the new year. Yeah, we skipped yeah. last year. We're going to do two in a row. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we skipped the good portion of last year, let's be honest. Well, we were on holiday. <laughs> I was going to say, we were busy. Um, yeah. We had deaths, happiness, houses. Not happiness at the deaths. Deaths were sad. Um, <laughs> deaths and happiness. Death, happiness. It's two different things. Um, when Kissinger died. That was pretty happy. Yeah. That, well, that was, <laughs> was that last year or this year? Last year. Damn. This year. Seems like it's already been a year. Whew. Also, nothing. Because we're already at... Oh, almost went the wrong tube. <laughs> already at the end of the month. This is the last podcast of January. Nate, what the fuck? Yeah, no. Time flies when you're casting the pods. Pod in the cast. No, time flies a little bit. Time flies when you're playing video games, which yeah. we did a lot of last weekend. Um, oh yeah. Hence the reason why we are we didn't record a podcast because uh, we were recovering from Magfest. Yep. Uh, Nate, did you check any uh, new games out at Magfest that you were excited about? Um. Well, I got roped into checking out an indie game. I forget the name of it. I have a card for it somewhere in my bag, which is still not unpacked from Mag. I'm so upset um, that you say it like it's a bad thing that you had to play an indie game. Come on. Well, let me let me get to it. It's not a bad thing that I got to play an indie game. The indie game I played, the guy described it as, you know, a diesel punk mech style game. Mm -hmm. um, but the mech was just at the end of the tutorial that I got to play, and the game itself is extremely derivative of Titanfall. Oh! When I say that, it's a first-person shooter with wall running and double jumping. <laughs> um, I mean, I like those things. Yeah, I mean, I like those things, but it's... When I say it's derivative, I mean, this is... I don't know what he plans to do with the game. I will continue to follow it. Um, but... When I say it's derivative of Titanfall, I mean it's Titanfall with a new skin on it, yeah. essentially. Um, I mean, so I'll be honest. I have to see. I yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, it felt more like it felt more like a proof of concept, like a game jam project, than it oh, okay. did something someone is trying to. Even though he is, he's trying to get it greenlit on Steam right now. Um, but it, it feels more like something you would submit to a game jam than something you would try to get greenlit on Steam. Because I can already see, like, if this goes up on Steam, the reviews are going to very much be, hey, this is basically Titanfall. <laughs> is is it, uh, hold on, where that? Sprawl? I don't think so. No? Okay. I just searched uh, indie game Titanfall, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's some, some developer named Maith. No. Um, <clears throat> speaking of, of game jams, um... I probably should have put this in random side notes for news, but um, Donkey started his company, Big Mode, last year. Hell yeah. And he is hosting his first game jam for Big Mode soon. <clears throat> so for aspiring game developers out there, you may want to submit an application or an entry or however he's doing it. I didn't get all the details, but uh, game jams were a big part of what I went through in college for my degree, so... <laughs> It looks like he already did host one. No, oh, he already did. Um, okay. Yeah, so we had the first one of 2023. Uh, it ran from 1127 up to 122, so... Huh, cool. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah because he put out the video. I think that's what that was, was the video uh, showcasing mm -hmm. all the Game Jam games. Um, but that means most likely with it being done once, most likely they do plan on doing it multiple times. Um, yeah. I'm still excited to see what comes from Big Mood. Uh, I think everybody is. And I don't think... <clears throat> a lot of people who are into indie games don't... I don't think they really understand how many of those games get made from submissions to game jams. <laughs> yeah. 
There's so much I want to look through on here, too. But that is for another time. That all is on YouTube, and you can just go to the uh, Itch.io Itch.io page. Um, and how do you say it? I know some people actually pronounce it itch.io. I, I like calling it Itch.io. I just say itch.io <clears throat> because people know what to type in their browsers. <laughs> True. All right, so it's itch.io slash jam slash big mode dash 2023. Uh, it's got a list of all the games, all that kind of fun stuff. They got a grand champion in red snow, which, oh yeah, my brother was just telling me about this. This is a um, downhill skiing game, skiing, snowboarding game, uh, but where you murder people. <laughs> you've got like you've got like swords or sticks or whatever that you're just running around whacking people. That's why it's called red snow. Uh, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely my kind of shit. Um, of course I typed in red snow and it gave me a 2019 movie. <laughs> is that the, uh, the, no, never mind. What's the, what's the, the yeah, Nazi zombie movie? Nazi zombie snow movie. Oh, dead snow. Dead snow. Yeah. Dead snow, red snow. Dead Snow 2, Red vs. Dead, that... Okay. What is it? <laughs> Fucking... <sighs> it's just one where they do the Soviets. Oh. <laughs> it might be. Hold on. Let's see. <laughs> no, I need, no, I need to double check. <laughs> oh, man. The original one was 2009. The second one was 2014. Uh... <laughs> Marnus Fendral, Ire of Zombies. Blah, 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 blah. It's too many words. Why is there not a quick synopsis, not full plot? The quickest synopsis I can find <clears throat> is still on the run from a group of Nazi zombies. A man yeah. seeks aid from a group of American zombie enthusiasts and discovers new techniques for fighting the zombies. That's all I got. Yeah, that's... Uh, whatever. Um, it's a f the first movie. It's stupid, but it's fun. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway... Um, yeah, I, like every time I go to MAGFest, I spend most of my time in the indie game area. My brain forgets 90% of the things, that's why I usually take pictures of everything. Uh, but two games specifically that stuck with me. Uh, one was called, I'm going to search this, yes, yeah. Um, one was called Unbeatable, mm -hmm. which was a rhythm-based, like adventure game kind of thing um and it's basically you you are hitting but buttons attacking things at the same time to the music and all that uh unfortunately it's one of those things where magfest is fucking loud so if anything is music based it is very hard to hear it um it was enough it, it has like especially the tutorial itself is has enough leeway that like, oh, you can't hear it, but you have a little bit of an extra time to hit the beats. Um, I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, it seemed fun. Definitely something that I might check out. It is already up on, uh, yeah, up on, oh, it's free to play. Oh, I thought it was like a demo thing, but it looks like it's actually free to play. Hmm. Um, it's called unbeatable. And then in brackets, white label, it is all up on steam. Um, like I said, free to play, you can get, the DLC, which is five dollars, I don't know how many like extra levels or expansion to that it is. Uh, oh, it looks like oh, you know what? No, that's just the that's just music. Cool. So it really is just hey, here's an entire free game. It looked fun. Mm -hmm. I de definitely recommend it. And I mean, hey, who can say no to free? Um, the other game that I spent way too much time playing was Slime sixty four. Um, again, I don't know if this is free. Do I have to pay for this? Oh, okay. Right now, the prologue is free. Uh, download Slime, or Slime 64, Slimes of the World prologue. I think that's what was up and running there. Um, yeah. it, it feels like an old school, like a, a 64 game. It feels like a 64 collect-a-thon platformer. And I mean, it's literally, Slime 64 is a 3D collect-a-thon platformer inspired by retro classics. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. They even kind of nailed the art style of it the N64 plays time. so well. Um, everything about it just felt so good to play. Uh, mm -hmm. I loved it. Um, 
if you saw mm-hmm. me at all during that weekend after I played it, I had a bell on. Uh, mm-hmm. It was something that I guess they were giving out to people that had played it. Um, I happened to play it and it's like in the downtime when nobody was there. Uh, mm-hmm. The developer sent his friend to do something and um, while he was cleaning something up, something fell and I grabbed it and handed it to him. Uh, and he said, hey, the developer of the game said, you can have this because you helped me. Out. And I'm like, yeah, cool. Thanks. So I, I kept that on me for the rest of the day or for the rest, rest of the weekend. No, I just, I watched the intro video on Steam and I mean, it's very reminiscent of the art direction is very reminiscent of that N64 mm-hmm. era. Um, it's very blocky, low poly, and uh, a lot of flat 2D textures. The weird thing, though, is seeing it run at 60 FPS. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's always fun. Um, and I mean, that's I, I absolutely love and still love to play uh, like Banjo-Kazooie and games like that. Um, part of me would love to, at some point, play through... Uh, Donkey, uh, Donkey Kong Country or Donkey Kong 64 or whatever the fuck it's called because I never played yeah. that. I played a little bit I never beat it. Um, mm-hmm. I think when we got it, not too long after that, our, our uh, N64 was quote unquote stolen. Uh, that's no. how I'm going to say it and that's all I'm going to say <laughs> on the matter. I actually have an N64. <laughs> that's cool. Do you have the expansion pack? Don't have the expansion the pack. Fuck? There was... so. Amazon in recent history has gotten into selling a lot of refurbished retro consoles. Yeah. Now they're ridiculously expensive. Like I paid way too much for the N64, but it was the clear orange one. And I never owned an N64 as a kid. I always went to my friend's house to play N64. They came to my house to play PS2. Um, So I was a PS2 kid. Um, But having an N64 was just a cool thing. And I saw it on Amazon. I could afford it at the time. So I bought it. Um, I wish I would have stopped at one of the booths at MAGFest because I know that they deal in a lot of retro games and picked up something like an expansion pack um, for it. But I'm looking, you know, places like eBay, Facebook Marketplace for people who are just selling lots of games. So that way I can purchase like a bunch of them at once, sell off whatever I don't want, keep what I do, um, and just start growing that collection. Cause I've, got a, I've got a pretty substantial PS2 collection as it is and a PS1 collection, so... I want to start collecting something else in the retro space. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you can always check out Regen. Yeah. I know Regen. Regen has has actually come up a lot. <laughs> um, oh yeah, it was a little a dinky little mm-hmm. store in White Marsh, and now it's a much bigger store in um, Towson. Yeah. Uh, Every the, time you look back artwork. up, all I can think is Stanley Cup. <laughs> it's not Stanley. <laughs> I know it's not Stanley. Uh, this is made in China, which is also where the Stanley <laughs> Cup is made. Um, I, don't know, I know it's like, not a Stanley Cup, but that's all I can think of. <laughs> I got Felix the Cat and Courage the Cowardly Dog and Max Goof and Darwin and then Fred Fred Burger. Everybody, everybody knows Fred Fred Burger. If you don't, you're too young. What are you doing here? <laughs> Um, God, this is like the most Seth Rogen laugh I've ever done. Um. <laughs> I can't. I I can do it when I'm not mm-hmm. trying to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> Seth Rogen laugh is in my in my like rotating laughs. I don't laugh the same way every time. Sometimes it sometimes it comes out of Seth Rogen. <laughs> I love. I looked for latest editions to see if like they because Regen does have a website. I'm like, oh, I wonder if they have a listing for everything. Their latest editions is nothing but fucking anime figures. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's Oob. <clears throat> mm. No, there oh. was a there was a store online. Well, it's probably still there. Um, let's see, DK Oldies. Yeah, so DK Oldies is still around. Um, a YouTuber I followed. Um, kind of went in pretty hard last year on DK Oldies for saying that they're basically a scam. Like they claim to refurb consoles and games and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and they're just not doing a great job. Um, but I don't know because all the reviews on their website say everything's pretty great. And I mean, it's a website where you could get, you know, a refurb like new N64 called their player pack, which is two controllers and the console itself and cables and all that stuff for 150. Yeah. Um, so I, I really don't know what their deal is, but Regen is local, so I could stick yeah. with them. And yes, their new additions are all fucking anime figures. Now, 
I will say, in them, in this anime figure stuff, they do have noodle stoppers. In most places, noodle stoppers go for like 30 bucks. They have mm -hmm. like a bunch of new, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen ones for 20 bucks. I'm like, do I need a... They got a panda. You got mm. Inumaki. Got an Anya. Do you want an Anya for your noodle stopper? No. <laughs> I like so, this uh, Ren figure they have up on the homepage. Aqua Float Girls. Um... And the Nezuko calendar. That one's cute. They got a bunch of REM. If you just search REM, it's like eight things. Or yeah. sorry, seven things. I don't have any of these. Oh, yeah. The store is still selling Amiibos, too, and not at ridiculous markups, either. Yeah, I meant to click on that. I saw that. They, yeah, that's, they don't have I mean, many. It's still a little expensive. I mean, yeah, but... They got the know. Luke Goblin. I would love to have the Luke Goblin just because he looks cool. Yes. The most expensive thing they have up here is Wedding Mario for $30. No, the Luke Goblin is 50 <laughs> Oh, sorry. I couldn't see the price behind my microphone. Oh. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean. Oh, still, what I was going to say, the art, all the art done for Regen is um, by, fuck, John Campo? Fuck, what is his name? His name's John. He is one of the <laughs> guitarists for Cowabunga Pizza Time. Uh, no, okay. <laughs> so if you saw them at MAGFest, he's also the guy that does the art for Regen. Gotcha. Let's see. Oh boy, I can get a Bug's Life for $14. Jesus Christ. Or you can do it the fun way for free. Come sail the seven seas. Oh yeah. No, it is always ethical to pirate Nintendo games. Um, <clears throat> it's always ethical to pirate any game that isn't legally available, not an incredible price up, up priced, up marked, priced marked, that word. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Got loose copies of Goldeneye for thirty five. What about tight copies? <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad joke. Sorry. Uh <laughs> I forgot that Starcraft came out on the N sixty four. They have Starcraft sixty four. We people don't talk about it. That's why you don't want to talk mm -hmm. about it. Don't bring it up. Oh, anyway, shit, they got wind back. Jesus I'm good buying wind back right now. <laughs> we can go. I mean, <laughs> I'll meet I'll meet you over there. It's like halfway between I, us. I right? still haven't been to Third Eye because I'm afraid of how much money is waiting in a pool box for me. <laughs> I would say let's go down. I'm going to call them and see if they'll, they will honestly just deliver it at this point. Like every time I think about going, it's that hour drive that gets on my nerves. <laughs> what, what if, what if we both go down Saturday? I guess that is fine. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not home or yeah, I, I'll be off at one. Uh, Kim is gone. Kim's going out of town for the week. I'm off the next day, so I don't have to worry about, like, I don't want to spend too much time out in the world. And cool. That was a sentence, right? Well, By the yes. way, this is a weekly, a bi-weekly podcast. Um, and we're 30 minutes in and haven't talked about anything on our We are 18 <laughs> minutes in, okay? I have a timer right here, motherfucker. Okay. You, our call time is a different amount of time. You're looking at what time it is. We didn't start until, like, 6. Um <laughs> <laughs> well, I I did want to specifically bring up Magfest because it is gaming. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we got to go to probably my favorite all time panel ever, uh, mm -hmm. which was <laughs> our friend Leslie. You know the the uh, final girl taco, oh space mm -hmm. taco, um, hosted the only amazingly the only Baldur's the Gate three panel, only and most unhinged Baldur's Gate three panel. <laughs> Well, that's this the thing. Was... Even if it was super hinged, it would have been the most unhinged. Well, yes. Um, it was amazing to me that it was the only Baldur's Gate 3 panel because I went to the Baldur's Gate 3 photo shoot. Crazy. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Um, like, as much love as the game has gotten and as many cosplayers as there were, like, I expected, you know, at least to hear that, hey, maybe some other people had submitted Baldur's Gate 3 panels. It turns out they were also the only submission for a Baldur's Gate 3 panel. <laughs> Absolutely um, crazy. And so they got a late slot. I believe that was Saturday night. Um, and yeah, nine. when we say it was unhinged, Leslie very much had a plan for how the panel was supposed to go. And that, that got thrown out the window pretty fucking quickly. It stuck to mostly. Really what they wanted to talk about um, 
in general was I think they wanted to talk about people's just love of it in the first place and then mm-hmm. the companions because that's what everybody yeah. loves about that game. Um, as the only person, one of, no, I think I was the only person in the audience that had, oh, no, no, sorry, one of two people in the audience that had never touched the game because I forgot Maki mm-hmm. was there too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I loved it. I absolutely loved every second of that panel um, except for the yeah. group of like five in the front. You know who you are. Shut the fuck up. Don't talk over people. <laughs> it was one of the three goddamn rules. Don't yeah. talk over people. Well, I digress. It was fun. I'm excited was fun. for whatever she decides to do next year. It's, um, it's inspired me to come up with a Baldur's Gate panel of my own. And if it doesn't turn into a panel, it'll turn into a YouTube video. So. Yeah. <laughs> I would say maybe we might want to do it as a YouTube. Hell, fuck. I should let you you two and uh, maybe have John hop in and you guys do like a special episode kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Do uh, What do we call those things that you used to do? Taco Tuesdays. Yeah, do a Taco Tuesday about it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I want to do a lot more of those this year, so we'll see. Cool. Get James in to do some stuff. We can talk about the fact that he's more famous than Yaya Han. Uh, <laughs> Han. Yaya Han. Han. Um, sorry, I was thinking about Han Solo. Uh, <laughs> everyone's favorite. Han Solo. Anyway, um, yeah. I, I love MacFest. MacFest is over, as you can't can tell, most likely from my voice. I'm still getting over a head cold. Uh, I was good all day. The last two days, I've been fine, but at night, my nose is like. Sorry, we got MagFest Two Electric Boogaloo coming up later this year. What? In the form of Mag Stock. That's what I'm talking. I'm not going to that. That's outside. <laughs> and it's going to be warm. Okay, you go to Ren Fair. Yeah, that's because people I know are there and are drinking. I don't know anybody else that's going to mag or mag stock. Two people is not enough people. <laughs> Sorry, one person that I know is not enough persons. Yep. Um, <laughs> you know, since we're on games, let's just go through some shit we've been playing. Okay. <laughs> um, we, I promise, this year we are adding more structure. That's why I have an intro now. I did an intro. Um, an and hey, if you are watching this and you have realized that no attention has been drawn to the lower part of the screen, we have joined uh, a campaign and then started our own branch campaign from said campaign. It all adds to the same campaign. I don't know how to describe it other than that. <laughs> Through Tiltify, um, we are raising money for PCRF, which is uh, a fund that is helping support the children of Palestine. Um, we got a little doobly do just scan the doobly do q qr code uh share it donate if you can uh, we plan on because i will release this as soon as possible so it'll make more sense this whole week we're gonna try and stream as much as possible um yeah i'm i'm excited to one get back to streaming and two this is the thing we i one of the things that i've wanted to do in general is try and do more charity streams and more charity focused uh campaigns and stuff like that um maybe every now and then we should try and do a a support us charity (laughs) stream (laughs) um but that's a whole other thing that we'll get to eventually uh anyway do that if you can we love you help kids help people that need help um yep if you can, if you can do by anything, like I said, sharing it alone is enough. It gets more eyes on it. Interacting with anything online for us gets that more views so it can be shared or seen by more people. Um, and obviously if you can donate, fucking donate, please. Um, yeah, I think I believe it is up through, I think partway through February is when the campaign that we're attached to ends. Um, maybe I'm not hundred percent sure, but yeah, cool. Um, on from that, Nate, what have you been playing? We're going to get back okay. to other stuff afterwards. Well, I'll just start with the thing that everybody knows and loves already. Um, no, so wait, no, I had that on third so we can both talk okay. about it. We both played about it. So then I won't start, start with that. <laughs> start with the thing that I've been playing. Um, I think I mentioned on our first podcast of the year, I did pick up a MetaQuest 3. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing some vr gaming um and one of the games that i've been playing is called into the radius um 
I guess the best way to describe the style of the game is combine things like Metro and I want to say Fallout, but probably not Fallout. Um, I'll say Metro and Escape from Tarkov, like a single player Escape from Tarkov kind of game um, where you are put in this world, a sort of Eastern European area, um, and some kind of event has occurred that's caused these anomalies to appear. Um, people cannot leave this area. People who were affected by this anomaly cannot leave this area because if they do, they, for some reason that is unknown, experience sudden and catastrophic organ failure. Um, but you are sort of, you're a person essentially who did live in this area, who is now kind of a scavenger hired by the UN to go seek out anomalies find artifacts, bring them back to a base, sell stuff, all kinds of stuff like that. The game has some very um, some very strict sort of elements in it. It's not an easy game to play, mm -hmm. I guess is what I'm getting at. Um, time management is a big part of this game. Resource management is a massive part of it. Um, you see in the trailer like people cleaning guns and stuff like that. That's a huge part of it. Upkeeping your equipment. Um, fighting these creepy monsters, Ugh. looking for anomalies that can damage you, um, <clears throat> and just all around uh, surviving in this world, surviving and learning how to thrive in it, essentially. Um, <clears throat> but the game does start you off very low. You work your way up over time. It's probably one of the better like, full VR games out there. Mm -hmm. In the sense that you have an open world to explore and it's there at your leisure for the most part. Um, the way you interact with objects is not some goofy like gimmick kind of thing. It's very much, if I see a thing on the ground and I want it, I can go to it and pick it up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. um, You have a backpack that has a certain amount of weight in it, so you just stuff things basically into a square, which is your backpack. Um, <laughs> but if you want to take something out, it's literally like reaching over your shoulder, pulling out the backpack, reaching in and taking out the thing you want. It's not just an inventory selection screen. <laughs> um, but I've been having fun with it so far. I plan on actually restarting it and having a better run. Uh, we'll probably be streaming that since I want to stream some more VR content. Um, the developer has stopped all updates for this game because they are currently working on a sequel to it already. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Ooh, overall, it's... Again, it's pretty fun if you enjoy the challenge of that kind of thing. The biggest challenge is the time management. There's this thing called the Tide um, that rolls in about every five in-game days. And if you get caught in the Tide, you are transported to a random place on the map, which may be nowhere near your home base with possibly very limited resources, depending on where you're going and what you're doing. Um, but, you know, overall pretty fun. If you're into that survival-style game, if you're into challenging games with you know, semi roguelike like features, games with realistic combat. This is probably something worth checking out. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I need to play more VR stuff. I have it, and I just don't touch it. Sure, it's a two, and I, but I still can play so many cool things. Um, what I need to do is start playing Beat Saber. That, th that thing is a workout. Yeah. I need to get my beat on. Got to beat off the beat, beat saber. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, uh, unfortunately haven't played much of, um, but I did get a free code, uh, in a giveaway, woo, um, for the new Prince of Persia, the Lost Crown game, the Metroidvania style, um, also known as, in my opinion, the best game Ubisoft has released in probably, when was, uh, when did, um, Far Cry Primal come out? Uh, <laughs> 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 but no, it is um, incredible what I've played. Like I said, I've only played about an hour or two. Um, it is probably one of the most comfortable to control games I've played in a long time. Um, now, obviously, it is since it is a uh, Metroidvania, it's more of a platformer based kind of thing. Um, so movement is very important. And if it feels bad, that's not good. You don't want a game that feels bad when you when the main goal is to move. Um, but just the little bit I played, like I said, uh, 
it's just it's great to get from point A to point B, even if you are doing a bad job at it. It still still feels good. Um, it is probably my favorite wall jump uh, in a game. <laughs> it it just works right because uh, mm-hmm. I know that that my least favorite thing of the new Mario Brothers game. Um, the wall jump felt wrong. I felt like I was doing it wrong the entire time. Every time I did it, this game it just it works. It feels right. Um, now it's going to show off this. The gameplay is going to show some stuff I haven't gotten to yet. It's not really spoilers. It's stuff that kind of everybody it, it staples of uh, Princess Prince Princess Persia Princess Persia games. <laughs> um, but no, I I am excited to play more of this. Uh, as somebody that absolutely fucking loves games like Guacamelee, um, the style of combat and the exploration feels much more akin to that than than uh, other Metroidvania games. Um, so once I... It, hell, you know what? I might stream this on Wednesday. Who fucking knows? Uh, this is definitely on my I need to play list. Um, because yeah. right now, all I've been doing unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> has uh been playing the game you were going to mention um mm-hmm. oh pal world man yeah fucking pal world yeah i mean uh, i won't even get into all the stuff surrounding pal world i just say this the reason that pal world works and is so popular is one it's elevator pitch which was pokemon with guns um that being said, it takes a while to even get to the stage where you have any guns. <laughs> um, yeah. And you have to have the but, right Pokemon to give them guns. Sorry, yeah. pals, the right pals. Yes. And the second thing is just a really simple and casual gameplay loop. Um, the game does have a lot of stuff in it, but it's very easy to get into. And a lot of it is simply explained and frankly automated for the player. Mm-hmm. Um Gathering resources is not really a chore in this game. Um, You know, the stat system, you gain one stat point per level. You put it in what you want to put it into. You know exactly what that stat does and what it's for. Um, Capturing pals is as simple as get them to a lower HP, throw a ball at them. Hope you catch them. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Sometimes if if they're either low enough level or you have raised your... uh Mm-hmm. pal power or whatever the fuck it is yeah uh, you don't even have to hurt them you just throw it at oh, their yeah. back and the boom it's yours you can raise your capture power pretty significantly mm-hmm. by you know collecting some items on the map and using a statue um the only surprise i really came across is going to the first tower in the game and not realizing how ridiculously over leveled the boss is <laughs> Um, I did die in that fight, but even death in this game is not that much of a punishment you just run back to a spot pick up your equipment and you're good to go yeah, even um, in the difficulty, uh, one thing that I really like about it is there's basically a easy, easy, medium, hard difficulty to begin with, but yeah. they also allow for custom, custom uh, games. In as far as I know, the custom games don't break achievements. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I haven't really looked at achievements. Um, Normally, when yeah. you do that, you get like a "this makes it so you can't get achievements" kind of message, um, mm-hmm. but it, it does. It is a lot of fun uh, just to fuck with the settings, make it a lot easier to do certain things. Because again, it it's a grind. Um, yeah. Once you get past the main opening tutorial kind of era area, or, or uh, let gameplay, I guess it it gets a lot grindy. Um, and as somebody that doesn't like that, that is something that turns me off of a lot of games. Um, yeah. I like the I mean, ability to be like, hey, leveling up is faster. Hey, your attacks do more damage. Uh, your po- your pal po- attack do more mm-hmm. damage and stuff. Or you can even make it so you take less damage. Yeah. Well, uh, just a couple hints for people who may experience the grind. Here's how you simplify the grind. Just capture fucking everything you can that too you will yeah. level up so much faster that way <laughs> um you even get all the materials you would have normally gotten from killing it anyway so just capture as much as possible um you can go back and you can get rid of pals you don't want or need but your pal box is basically an infinite space so you never have to worry about managing it um 
It also helps with all the base automation stuff. I think one of the coolest things and the thing I didn't expect from this game is essentially using your pals to work at your base and automate a lot of the processes. Now, um, I will say, <laughs> that's a cool <laughs> idea, and it's cute at first. Yeah. But there is a point in this game <laughs> that you basically are building sweatshops for Pokemon. Oh, yeah. um, like, there are literal uh, conveyor belts. Um, yeah. That well, you make you, your, your pals work at. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, you have to do a lot to keep them happy and to keep them from slacking off and getting tired and things like that. But um, you build the right stuff in your base, you keep it topped up, and you're pretty much good to go from there. Another um, thing, n- uh, unexpected thing, um, this is an isekai. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you literally much... wake up in this world. Um, yeah. You do wake up in this world. Um, it is is very isekai in that front. Um, Which also means the opening of this game is almost exactly the same as, uh, <laughs> was it Pokemon, the Arceus, 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 yeah. Arceus. Yeah. Um, Reptyro. No. I want that little dude. I want the little fucking yeah. teleporting uh, plague doctor. Yes. <laughs> no, there is, like I said, it's just a very simple, casual gameplay loop to get into it's a game i can pick up for 20 minutes at a time or sit down and play for you know three or four hours at a time um and just like most games like this it's even if you're playing like base minecraft it's very much like give yourself a plan for what you're going to do during the game's daytime go and get it done sleep at night go the next day and you know rinse wash and repeat essentially Mm -hmm. um well you know what i just thought about this i have things playing let me stop that because i took notes that I wanted to actually talk about with this game? Let's see. Where's my documents? Is it in here? Pal World! Alright. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I broke it down. You catch pals and pal spheres. Egg incubators are a thing. You get more points the more you catch. Arceus style. <laughs> um, the, literally, I have that under a bracket called... Or, or, a bullet point called the Pokemon of it all. And then the <laughs> not Pokemon of it all, which is used... Uh, pals are weapons the attack pals wait yeah uh, it's possible to catch humans I don't know if you caught a human yet you can catch humans yes um, I caught a wandering merchant which is great because guess what I have a merchant with me at all times um, <laughs> you can arm some pals uh, pals can be used for labor uh, <laughs> I, I put another bullet, bullet point here will sometimes slack off or stop working Dot 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 lazy generation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I did like the fact that there was no direct battle system like Pokemon versus Pokemon kind of thing. Um, at least that I know of so far. Does that change when you get into the towers, or is it just fuck around and find out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, the the hunting of the po- the pals is it feels more like Monster Hunter to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and in a way that I like Monster Hunter, which is it's there, I can f- try and kill it, and I don't have to worry about a goddamn time limit. Um, <laughs> come on, just give me, I want an open world Monster Hunter where I don't have to go on mission based time limits. Uh, that's all. You have uh, that in Monster Hunter already. Which one? You can just go on expeditions. It's been in Monster Hunter forever. There's no time limit whatsoever. In expeditions, no. I don't have to you worry about it, like running off into another room and then having to follow it into that room, and then. Well, yeah, you'll have to wait for that, but the running away is not a time limit based mechanic. Yeah, but that's running also away is a health based mechanic. <laughs> yes, is that where the the monsters run away. Yes. Nah, fuck that. That is a, that is based on their health, and if you're clever enough and with the right party of people, you can stop a monster from running away. See, I, I don't. I want to play by myself. That's the problem. You, you, Put it in a trap and you beat its ass and lots in the trap. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, you're sounding like pal number sixty nine, okay? Um, well, I did. I nobody. compared. God, we'll bring we'll bring that up later. Uh, I compared the crafting and base building most similarly to Falheim. Uh, another reason why I was really enjoying this game. Um, it's the kind of it's similar where like if you knock out the supporting thing, everything above it tumbles. Um, base can be attacked at random like Valheim um, 
and I heard that one because I've only been attacked by the uh, the pleasure was it pleasure sources relaxosaurus relaxosaurus. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard that it can be attacked by the weird uh, Pokemon that wants to fuck people. Um, mm-hmm. I, my biggest issue, and this is also I have it under the the Valheim tab, um, the weight limit is so goddamn small. Uh, so. What? Yes, it is, but it's fairly easy to just increase that weight limit. With just your level up points or Yeah. Yeah, I know, but then you're taking that point away from something else. I feel you like barely the... I, I'm going to tell you from experience at this point, like I'm only I think level twenty five in the game. You don't need those other points. You don't really? Okay. <laughs> there like, there are two you... things. I so when I did my fuck around um, playthrough, mm-hmm. which is just, I'd made everything super easy to level up and all that. I put all of my stats into the weight limit in the work time because the work time, oh my God, it's so much better when you make that faster. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I would say the stats to prioritize are weight limit, work time, and stamina. You yeah. do not need to worry about attack. You do not need to worry about HP because those will naturally go up as you craft better gear. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and the stamina again can be cured by the uh, the <laughs> custom things. Um, just yes. saying, all all the other stats can be cured by that. The only ones that can't really be affected by it are the um, the other two, the two that we were saying we should actually upgrade. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's funny. I I really do break it down to like it's kind of like Pokemon. It's kind of like Monster Hunter. It's kind of like Valheim. And the last one, it's kind of like Ark. It's a lot like Ark. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, like Ark. The, the way that the level, the progression in um, craftable items and upgrades and stuff, mm-hmm. very similar. Uh, oh, yeah. In that you, can you build have saddles for certain monsters. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have gloves for glider pals. Yeah. You can um, have gloves for glider pals. You can have gloves that turn one of the pals called a jolt hog into an electric grenade. Which is oh, really fun. fun. <laughs> um, yeah. You were talking about the fact that it's not that you're giving the little penguin dude a bazooka. He is the missile. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the last it, thing, he gets knocked out as soon as he hits it. <laughs> the, there's like the, the quote unquote special uh, upgrade points where you can unlock other things, um, which yeah. those other things question for you under mm-hmm. those special unlock things. Did you have the power statues or the egg incubator in them. Mm, I had the power statue because what you find is these little lift. There's a pal in the game called Lift Monk, and there's these effigies to it. Yeah, they're little green things on the map. You collect those. I go to the statue of power and it lets me upgrade my capture power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you found that it, it was that something you could you had to unlock to build, or were you, was that already like with no, no, your? You can. So you can build a statue of power at yeah. your base, but you can also find them naturally around the world yeah okay um and i don't know if different ones do let you upgrade different things the current one that i have built lets me upgrade my capture power personally with the lift monk effigies and then with the pal souls i can upgrade yeah i think that, i think that's pals. just i think mm-hmm. that's just how it is um the the first playthrough i had had the um i think it had the yeah the power stone the power Mm -hmm. statue in that purple column to unlock. And then the second playthrough had the egg incubator in that column, same Mm -hmm. position, just a different item. Um, which is really weird to me. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know if it was a weird glitch. It could very well be these games. It's, it's in, uh, open. It's uh, open, not beta, basically open beta, uh, early access. That's the term. Um, Man, I don't know. It's fun. It's I, I probably probably won't go back to it. I might pop it on uh, PC and play a little bit because uh, I have only played it on Xbox. Um, but it, it's not grabbing onto me like Valheim did the first time. Um, definitely not like Minecraft. Minecraft is still Minecraft to me. Nothing beats Minecraft for me. Uh, it is still my comfort game that I go back to all the fucking time. Um, mm-hmm. otherwise, you know, check it out. It's, it's on game pass. Um, the game pass version, both on PC and on Xbox is different from the PC version that you have to pay $30 for. Um, 
and it will always be different. The way that the developers talked about it is it will always, it's not that it's behind. It is just going to be a different version no matter what. That's just the, that's just how it's going to work out. Um, I don't know if it's on any other consoles yet. I don't hmm. remember. Let's see. Platforms. Yeah, right now it is only PC and Xbox. Hmm. Um, there have been people joking around about the fact that they want it on Switch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think Craftopia might be on Switch. Hold on. No? Just, wow! Craftopia is only on PC and Xbox. Interesting. Hmm. Wow. So, a fan of the game has created an entire website called Palpedia. Yes. So, you could have an entire, like, online Pokedex. It's got a breeding calculator, yep. all kinds of stuff in it. You can sort them by their work skills, which is really useful. I wish the game actually had that in it. You can't sort, sort them, it, but it shows that. It shows what their yeah. skills are. Well, I sort them by element because the work skills are common among certain elements. Like, grass types usually have a logging or a seeding skill. Water types, of course, have a watering skill. Most earth types have a mining and gathering skill. All the normal ones usually just have gathering, which is not great. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Um, no, there is... There's depth to this game to be explored, but it's not necessary to explore all of the depth. Like mm -hmm. what makes it fun. Um, that being said, I'm I'm continuing to have fun with it. I mean, I, I don't believe it's ever going to. I, I believe the the hype around it is going to die down very quickly, very soon. But um, the developer already has a roadmap up. They're looking at introducing PvP and some other elements as well. Currently, before they do PvP, they're trying to deal with uh, a cheating epidemic that's going on in the multiplayer. <laughs> um, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they're also looking to probably remove some exploits, which I have to take advantage of one before it gets removed, and that is the <laughs> ability to capture certain bosses. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wait, what bosses? Like, human so, bosses or... Yeah, so the first tower you go into has Zoe and her giant electric pal, who I forget the name of. Oh, Toro um, Totoro Buzz. Buzz, Buzz Totoro. Yeah. Oh, Grisbolt is yeah, what it is. It's Buzz Totoro. Okay. So someone found out how to capture the Grisbolt with Zoe on it still. Um, this goes into your into your pal decks and your pal box just as Grisbolt. Like, Jesus Zoe is not included, but every time you pull out the model, it's got, She's got Zoe attached to it. Cool. Um, the way that this exploit works is you first have to get the wanted status. So that way, like basically the in-game cops are after you, oh, you yeah. go into the tower, you, um, run around the tower until the cops enter the tower themselves. And you keep running around without engaging in any combat whatsoever and let them fight each other. Right. And then when their back is turned to you, because you have an increased capture percentage, when a pal's back is turned to you, mm -hmm. you basically throw your highest level sphere at the back and wait to get a capture, essentially. Okay. <laughs> and so you have this extremely overstatted version of Grisbolt now. Like, hmm. all of the boss stats are on that pal. <laughs> Weird. So you end up with, with a pal that's got, like, 35,000 HP. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> but does he slack off? Will he just endlessly charger base <laughs> oh no he's got let's see he's got no, a, I, I don't, I don't really an electricity generation of three so the second highest okay <clears throat> I, transporting so three handiwork two and lumbering two, i so will say good. uh probably my favorite thing um about this and w the part that makes it very not super pokemon-y um you can get excuse me you can get different variations. And I'm not talking about just like, oh, it's a shiny version. Uh, there are lucky. I have caught mm -hmm. like two lucky pals. Um, but you can get other typed versions of pals. Um, yeah. Which I think is a really cool idea. Like you can find uh, electric versions of water types and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Either you can do that by breeding them or you can get do that by um, 
hatching eggs, which you can find randomly throughout the world, which is definitely not anything like Pokemon Go. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, it's, it's a cool idea. I like that. I love the idea of being like, hey, you like the you like the Relaxosaurus? Well, what if he was electric? Um, <laughs> so it's interesting to see that kind of mechanic. And it, again, it's one of those things. There are certain parts of this game that I would love to see in the games that they are pulling from. Um because it feels like, hey, here's a game that you love, here's a twist on that game, but within that is a thing that you would have liked to just be in the other game. Um, mm-hmm. Like, for instance, this is kind of what I would prefer out of a... Okay, let's... All out on the table, this runs so much fucking better than fucking Pokemon. The last yeah. Pokemon game runs like shit. This game is an indie game that runs beyond better than that. Sure, are the mm-hmm. textures great? No, but guess what? The textures <laughs> in Pokemon... Uh, what are the last one? Violet and something or other? Scarlet. Scarlet <laughs> and Violet. I didn't play that one, so I only remember the one I, I used. Um, <laughs> not great. They were not great. Uh, sure. No... Uh, big muscle mommy uh, mm-hmm. NPCs. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the NPCs are lacking. Let's put it that way. Uh, nobody's walking away from this game being like, hey, anybody else have a crush on that gym leader? Sorry, there's no Gary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, you know, it, you got good and you got bad. It would be great if, not Nintendo, eh, Nintendo is a third of the company, um, but if Pokemon saw this and was like, Okay, we need to spend more time. We we can yeah. put out a good because the game itself, the gameplay itself in the new Pokemon game is fun, mm-hmm. visually and performance wise, it is very much lacking. Especially after the next biggest game after that was fucking Tears of the Kingdom, which was pushing that fucking system to its limit, um, mm-hmm. and doing a great job at it. Yeah. Uh, well. Yeah. I think the the comparisons being drawn between the two are definitely there. Um, I mean, the Pokemon Company is, at least according to their official statement, quote unquote, investigating the scheme. Yeah, uh, and I will admit the mm-hmm. way that it is worded in the fact that it took this long after the fact that this game was an openly known thing. We've been jokingly calling it uh, Pokemon with guns for years now. Mm-hmm. It's not like it wasn't a secret that it looked like Pokemon. Um, They could have taken action earlier. They didn't. And I think part of that is because they felt no, they did not find, feel the need to do so. Um, I think the reason they are is because there's been enough fan outcry that they're like, Hey, okay, fine. We're looking into it. Um, Mm -hmm. Will anything come of it? I really don't think so. Um, I know people have done the whole, like, their models are almost exact, blah, blah, blah. Sure. <laughs> um, but it just feels different enough that it wouldn't be. And I mean, we're talking about a company that literally, so Nintendo of America literally exists to sue the fuck out of people. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it'll be fine. I think we'll get away from this. We'll be years down the road and just laughing about, haha, do you remember the Pokemon with Guns game? Um, yeah. So, I look forward to whatever they continue to do. And I believe, I can't remember, we talked about it, but I believe the next game they are planning on doing is a Metroidvania um, Hollow Knight almost kind of, not clone, but we're going to call it clone. Fuck it. Um, <laughs> so I'm excited for that. That'll, that'll be fun. Probably. Who knows? Maybe that'll come out before fucking silk song. <laughs> that is no hate on team cherry team cherry. Take all the fucking time you want. It's just a fun <laughs> joke at this time. Uh, I will come at you though, because I'm pretty sure I made this logo before you guys did just saying, <laughs> putting a control, putting, putting a D pad in two buttons on a food item. I don't know, man. <laughs> you need to, you need to trademark it. I'm going to take a, some <laughs> legal action. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Again, love you, Team Cherry. <laughs> uh, you play anything just, else, Nate? I haven't played much else, honestly. Um, 
I'm looking into playing some more VR stuff. I still haven't finished Half Life Alex. Um, but um, some of these games, even games like Into the Radius, um, a lot of these, you know, more intense VR games. Half Life Alex to me is a very intense, almost survival horror esque game. Um, they just wear me out really quickly because mm-hmm. it's a lot of my mental energy going into focusing on what I'm doing at all times. It's less of that casual, like beat saber. Or I can jump into like an easy game and just play all my arms around and complete a level versus a game like into the radius where it's like, if I'm not paying attention at all times, I will die. <laughs> I will actually fucking die. And that is depending on where I die, that can be like, okay, not so bad to holy shit. This is actually a fucking chore to get any of my stuff back. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I'm I'm mostly excited for things that are coming up this year. Um, oh yeah, I, I want to get some shit. yeah, and I want to get back into playing some games I dropped. Um, still haven't finished Baldur's Gate three. I actually deleted my save file so I can start fresh with all the new patches and everything that have come out. Are you going to eat the hand um, or whatever the fuck? I don't know. I, I'm probably not going to do a dark urge as my first playthrough. Um, I had a dark urge character. It was fun but it's not something I recommend really anybody do as a first playthrough because it is such... It's one, a more challenging experience even if you're playing the game on easy mode and Mm -hmm. two, it doesn't give you the ability as a character to sort of build your own role play in the universe. Dark Urge is very much... Any of the origin characters are very much already established, including Dark Urge and the story stuff that comes up later for Dark Urge is Mm -hmm. like your plot was kind of already set out for you you just have choices in how that plot resolves itself um <clears throat> armor core 6 has gotten a lot of updates recently including ranked pvp oh, um i haven't even close to beat armor core 6 the game i got to such a difficult point in the game that i had to build what i called the brute force build to get through it <laughs> um <laughs> hey whatever works right yeah um <sighs> Too many guns, two grenade launchers, and basically the tankiest body I could possibly build. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it was, and it was weird to me because I'm watching people who have played the game and they're like, oh, it's so easy to beat this boss. Look at what I do. And I'm like, I can never get the boss to move that way for me. <laughs> Not oh, doing God. it. <laughs> um, or I can never get my armored core to move the way I want it to to actually do those things. So it's still a lot of practice. I mean, it is. It is made by From Software. What else could I possibly expect, honestly? <laughs> um, right. But yeah, just excited for what's coming up later this year. Cool. Um, all right. Well, in that case, uh, let's get on to some some of what we've been watching, reading, listening, playing. Not playing. We've already done that. Fuck me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, wait, did we not talk about Echo? No. Damn, that came out. At, that's so weird to me. It feels like it. It feels like it came out um, months ago at this point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I blame the fact that it was all one sitting. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, anyway, the one thing that both of us have watched. <laughs> uh, Echo. Echo dropped all six episodes. How many episodes yeah. was it? Yeah. Uh, all six episodes in one drop. I am both a fan and not a fan, as you can see. I It's not that mm-hmm. I forgot that I watched it. It's that it feels like it was so long ago now. Um, I loved it. Uh, I think we may have talked about this a little bit. Wait, no, I feel like we talked about this. How have we not talked about this? No, I don't, I don't think we did talk about it because we planned to talk about it on the last podcast, which we did not do. Yeah. And also I did not watch it at the same time you did. Okay. Why do I feel like I've had this conversation with someone then? I do not know weird because nobody else i know watched it um (laughs) that's not saying that is not commenting on the quality of it again i absolutely loved it i am excited to see where her character goes i am Mm -hmm. excited to see what this does to the mcu overall especially a little end bit um wait no come on (laughs) i feel no i talked about this end bit with you 
Did we not okay, talk about the I teaser? I don't think we talked about it on the podcast. How? 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 I don't talk to you outside of content. <laughs> yes, you do. Not often. <laughs> we're we're occasionally real life friends. <laughs> oh my god! I that's so crazy to me because in my head I'm like, no, wait. I the things I'm saying I feel like I've said before. Okay. Well, you just, talk. How about you talk? Because I've talked I'll in talk my head. It. I've talked about I'm this not, already. I'm not going to do like a total recap, like oh, no, for Marvel stuff. We don't. Before. We don't need to do that. All I'm going to say is this: It's great that first of all they um, they dove into the heritage of the character. Maya is her name. Um, she's a member of the Choctaw Nation, um, and they really dove into that. And her powers come from basically her ancestors, um, all the way back to the very first like Choctaw creation story. Um, I also just really enjoy that we're getting a focus on more street level heroes. Um, Echo is one of those. Um, I think Daredevil is currently the biggest name in Marvel properties that is a street level hero, considered to be a street level hero. Whoa, hey, whoa, hey, whoa, hey, whoa, whoa. Spider-Man. Well, but Spider-Man has also, you know fought with the Avengers against Thanos. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, we didn't get street level <laughs> Spider-Man. Hopefully we will moving forward, but yes. When I say street level, I'm talking about the guys who are taking out, you know, criminal kingpins in their neighborhoods, which yeah. exactly this, right? Literal um, kingpins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Vincent D'Onofrio's kingpin, still a great character overall. Um, I saw something story recently. Does... Oh, sorry. I was going to say, well, I, I saw something recently where uh, <laughs> he loves the fact that the costume designers have figured out a way for him to wear an outfit that makes it look like he is still massive without actually having to be that massive anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, that being said, they, they did dive more into how Kingpin's trauma in his childhood informs his character and informs the kind of person he is now, um, which was really great. Um this whole series played out very much like it was a one man army, a one woman army in this case, going up against a massive criminal empire. Mm-hmm. And in many ways succeeding, in many other ways also kind of almost failing. Um, but it's interesting to see where this will go from here because. Marvel again is ramping up on the street level hero stuff. Um, We've and, got Daredevil: Born Again already filming. Yeah, uh, which so, is also recanonizing to a certain extent. Um, the way they've talked about it is it it, it kind of plays with the canon a bit, but recanonizing the uh, the Netflix series into the MCU. Um, mm-hmm. With we now have uh, officially. Technically, just because of set photos, uh, Foggy and Karen are returning. Yeah, played by the same actors. Um, so that's yep. cool. And I'm, I'm excited to see where the crossover is going to be. Right? I mean, we already had you know Daredevil fighting Maya in his own fucking series. Um, <laughs> but um, what? No, what? No, not in his own series. What was in that? This. No, only this. in this. Only in this? Yeah, only in this one scene. There's like a three minute fight scene. I could have swore they fought before. I could have swore that scene was pulled from something else. No, that's in this. That's just from this. Oh, okay. Uh, well, it was like her final, the reason oh, why. I know what it was. I'm just, I'm remembering going back to Hawkeye when Mike oh, was a yeah. bullet in Kingpin's head. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, going back through, I mean, I, I'm really just excited to get to see the crossovers between all of them. Um, Maya is still very much in anti-hero mode right now. (laughs) She's kind of always been that character. I mean, she was trained essentially to be an assassin by Kingpin. Um, so, you know, it's just interesting to see where the crossovers happen, where the friction between the heroes is going to be very, Daredevil is very much like a no kill kind of guy. So that's going to be interesting to see when he eventually probably has another team up with Maya. Um, and I mean, we've Hawkeye seen is, butt heads with uh, with people like that before with Punish- Punisher. Yeah, so. Hawkeye is out of his Ronin phase, so and now he's got his own sidekick essentially. So <laughs> we'll see where that goes. But um, yeah, 
I mean, they're they're doing good stuff on the TV front. Um, I wish they were doing better things on the movie front, but wait, that what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm sorry. Quantum Mania was yeah, yeah. Not one great. the three movies that they released last year, and one I, was bad. And I haven't seen the Marvels yet, so I can't say anything about. So that. the Marvels, <laughs> and I will say this: Kim, uh, Kim personally puts it in their top five uh, of the entire MCU. Um, I would probably, if I re ranked everything, I would have things moved around, and it would be in my top ten. Um, mm -hmm. Miss the the Marvels is by far one of the most entertaining. And I'm we're going to strip away all of the MCU bullshit, everything else. The Marvels is one of the most entertaining superhero movies ever in my opinion. It is up there mm -hmm. with the original Iron Man. It's up there with um just for like fun shit, the first Ant-Man. The first Ant-Man's so fun. Um yeah. That that is what I want. I want to see that shit. Uh, and that's why I loved it so much. I, I love that it's like, hey, it's not too serious. It is fun. There's parts that are so campy, but you ex you just accept it because this is the world we are in now. Um, and hmm. the upside is it is on Disney Plus February 7th. So everybody go fucking watch that. Make them regret pulling it from theaters early. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Fuck, fuck Disney. Um, holy <laughs> fucking shit. Chance put out a new song. Really? Yeah, sorry. That very random... Uh, Chance the Rapper has not put out a new song in like five fucking years. Uh, mm -hmm. It feels like. Um, anyway, I'm going to listen to that after this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> the hell were we talking about i've been sidetracked by chance the rapper god damn you uh yeah echo uh i loved it did you love it yeah yeah it's pretty good fucking uh ground level ground level shows is where it's at give us that disney learn learn from that i think they <laughs> like i said they already have they're going back to the drawing board or they went back to the drawing board with daredevil um mm -hmm. i am upset because since then there have been there's been talks that she hulk most likely is not going to get a second season um mm -hmm. supposedly it's a budgetary thing i think it's whiny little bitches that don't understand what the fuck that show was trying to be um or what yeah. the message of that show was, because the message was, you are the problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it, which sucks, because I would love it. That Daredevil and She-Hulk existing within the same use, universe continuously would have been amazing. Um, I really hope that she's not done as She-Hulk. I would love to see more of her. I would love to see, just in general, more of that character. Um, what I really mm -hmm. want, and especially after the Marvels, I just want them to make the official announcement that Miss Marvel's getting a second season. Give me more Miss Marvel. Let her be let her be the MCU's real Spider-Man because Sony is a piece of shit and just Yeah, you know what? I can't just say that. The whole <laughs> Spider-Man the Spider-Man licensing and rights and all that bullshit is so annoying to deal with. And I would love if it was just like, hey, you can use it as much as you want. We can still make our movies, um, which, by the way, we may or may not be kind of... We're we're going to go see uh, Madam Web. Will it be good? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Will it be fun? Maybe? Maybe. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of cast members that I like, none of which are the main character, Madam Web. Um, sorry, mm -hmm. I don't... She's, she's one of those... Because she's the one from... Um, the, the Fifty Shades of Grey movies, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, you know what? I can't... I'm, I'm going to make this joke because Fifty Shades of Grey is basically the porn version of um, Twilight. Uh, I don't want to give anybody shit that are, is from a quote-unquote Twilight movie because look at where... Um, Robert Pattinson. Look at where Pattinson's gotten, man. He's my new favorite Batman. He's my new favorite voice actor. <laughs> Not really favorite, <laughs> but you know, Pattinson. he's fucking kicking ass and taking names. Um, just don't take jobs from real, real voice actors. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all over the place, man. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. 
<laughs> so one from Echo. Um, you have something on here that you watched, but I did Holy not. Holy shit, son. I did not expect to fucking love Percy Jackson. Um, Percy Jackson is everything that Harry Potter wants to be and more. Uh, Percy Jackson is a show where the creator of the show um, fully supports the casting decisions. Uh, a character from the original book was a blonde. Um, the character, the actress was changed to be a black girl. Uh, there have been talks about how at one point blondes were looked at as the the dumber whatever mm -hmm. kind of thing but that stereotype is kind of going away um but so the, the character is actually incredibly intelligent incredibly strong and all that kind of thing but it's one of those like the character is like oh people think of blondes as dumb and shit like that and we mm -hmm. blah 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 in this character is supposed to be the fuck off no we aren't yeah. They did that because that is how people treat black women. And they're like, hey, look, she's going to fucking, she's, she's a smart one. She's the one that's taking, getting shit done. Fuck you. <laughs> Change your mindset. Um, it's the, like all of the cast in general. I love it. They are great. They're kids. They're kids having fun. And if anybody's like, oh, they're bad actors. They're kids. Fucking Daniel Radcliffe, Daniel Radcliffe, all of them were horrible in the first movie. Mm -hmm. They got better. They're going yeah. to get better. And these guys are already better than they ever were in the Harry Potter series. Sorry, well, the, the early Harry Potter series. That's um, just a crazy notion about child actors in the first place. Is I recently went back and watched um, Home Alone because it's technically a Christmas movie. <laughs> so technically it is a Christmas movie. It is a Christmas movie. Um and Macaulay Culkin is not good in that movie. <laughs> no. Some would argue Macaulay Culkin never became a good actor. Um he became a beloved actor. Mm -hmm. uh, His brother Kieran is a much better actor. Kieran, so. <laughs> Kieran is an incredible actor and a pretty good voice actor, as we will talk about later. Um <laughs> <laughs> no yeah uh per percy jackson it it is obviously we had a movie series i don't know if we did more than one movie who knows um they mm -hmm. had had the movies years ago i tried to watch it i didn't like any of it this mm -hmm. i within like the first episode i'm like all right i'm in i don't know anything about this um and then i think they dropped like the first two or three episodes day one uh the finale is tuesday and i'm very impatient and i would just like to jump to wednesday so i can watch <laughs> it um but no I, I i think it is a really good series great for younger audiences uh people that grew up loving uh oh what is a good series i can turn it to my my brain wants to say like buffy and angel but that's because it it makes me think of that like, it plays with myths and... Oh, my God. Oh, oh, hold on. I know this. Oh, what the hell was that show? Uh, I don't know how to talk about it. Gods are real. Gods are real. The monsters from the, the from Greek mythology are real. Uh, Percy Jackson, if you don't know, spoilers, is the son of Poseidon. Um, uh, they have a Medusa episode, and Medusa's hmm. played by... A favorite actress of mine um one because i think mm -hmm. she's a good actress and two because she's gorgeous uh <laughs> <laughs> hey if you're gonna if you're gonna cast medusa make her fucking pretty as hell um mm -hmm. i can't remember her name right now hold on <sighs> jessica parker kennedy mm. um yeah i don't know <laughs> You can Google it, man. Um, you are literally at a computer right now. Um, you are literally at a computer. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm recording my screens. Um, but no, I I was gonna say I, I highly recommend it. Uh, like I said, it ends on Tuesday. All of the episodes will be out and available to watch. Um, 
it's just a fun action show for kids in all ages mm-hmm. K- ages kidding up um <laughs> yeah uh-huh. gods man good <laughs> i love so i just have an attachment to, to mythology in general i've always loved mythology um yeah that's why i enjoyed moon knight more than some people because it deals mm-hmm. with egyptian gods um that's why i enjoyed seeing the the like te- not temple of gods but the that like mm-hmm. city of the gods in thor love and thunder which yeah sure is it the greatest movie no is it fun yeah. as fuck yes is that scene really cool to be like oh that's this god that's this god and then there's other gods that's like oh these are gods that they made up just for fun um mm-hmm. anyway yeah. percy jackson mythology is cool. Plus. mythology is cool read the odyssey fuck you it's <laughs> great <laughs> or or it's not technically mythology Read Beowulf. There you go. This is the best version of Beowulf you will ever see in your life. It's gorgeous. (laughs) Gorgeous. Not not the one with Angelina Jolie's 3D ass? Fuck no. (laughs) Nate, you can talk when I walk away. Um, Okay. (laughs) Jesus goddamn Christ. (laughs) Anyway. um, What else have you been watching, Nate? Well, quick update on where I am at One Piece. I'm on episode 97. We're currently in Alabasta proper. Yeah. Finally. Um, You've met my waifu. Yes. I've also been introduced to Ace, who is... Other people's husbands. Like, my favorite character so far. I don't know what it... Like, I've always had this thing. Back when I first started playing Pokemon, um, I got Pokemon Red because it had a big fire dragon on it. (laughs) Um... My starters in every Pokemon game have always been the fire starters. My favorite pals in Pal World are the fire pals. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, fire, well, electric, yeah. and fighting types have always been my thing. <laughs> so you're, are you watching subbed or dubbed? You've moved to dubbed, right? I've moved to dubbed because it's just a much easier watch for me. Do you know who the voice actor is for Ace? I do not. His voice just sounds very familiar. Travis Willingham. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I'm surprised now that I now that I'm hearing his voice in my head. Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Travis. Travis is great. Um, so no, I'm I'm still enjoying it. Um, it is less of a grind to get through now that I can mm-hmm. switch over to dubs on Crunchyroll. Um, so I'm going to continue to keep up with it. I did not watch a lot this week, but I am finding time to watch it later um, because my new fixation are now two other shows, one which is releasing two episodes every week right now, and the other one which is finished, um, but I'm still only on episode four of. Um, So the one I am on episode four of is Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. Hell Um, yeah. I have to say, the way that this show started was fucking genius. (laughs) Lured you into a a sense of security? Well, it lured me into a sense of, oh, God, this is just the fucking movie in cartoon form. <laughs> hey, wait, wait. First of all, fuck you. It's the comic I'm not say- in I'm cartoon not, form. I'm not saying it is. Let me finish. <laughs> it lures you into believing, like, this is going to be the movie in cartoon form because it hits so many of the same plot beats. Some of the dialogue is deliberately ripped directly from the movie script for Mega Wright. In the, in the comic. Um, yes, it's in the comic as well. I know. Okay, um, I'm just like, it's, it was a, yeah, yes. comic, for, comic first, man. But let's be honest, who, okay, are people more familiar with the comic or the movie? I don't give a shit. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, <laughs> that is what they were aiming for, pretty obviously. Yeah, well, I mean, and when then, you get back the entire voice cast, yes. Yes, and then, when it gets to the fight with Matthew Patel, um, Scott dies, um, <laughs> and... So that was just the big shocker just in the first episode alone. And then later on, we get a second episode that's just about the League of Evil Exes. And Matt goes to take over the League of Evil Exes from Gideon Graves and beats Gideon, Mm -hmm. which is fucking insane, honestly. So then once that happened, I'm like, I'm in. I'm I'm invested at this point. Um, And then when I got to episode four, which is literally called Whatever, 
Um, <laughs> it starts off one of my uh, favorite focus. songs ever, for one thing. Yes. So the the way that that runs is, you know, young Neil writes a script. He writes a script um, <laughs> that becomes the Scott Pilgrim movie that we know. <laughs> Um, where Scott beats Matthew Patel and goes on to beat the rest of the legal, evil Eva exes uh, and, you know, wins Ramona at the end and so on and so forth. Um, and so it's it's great to see how, like, meta they are with it. There's even, like, a little... I forget what they call them, the thing that they click for the movie scenes. Um, the board, where they write the titles and time mm. and stuff on. Um and it's funny because the director's name on it is written as Agar Raw. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, no, it's great that they go through that. And it seems like what the show is focusing on is Ramona's journey in her recognition of sort of the people that she's hurt in her life. Um, <clears throat> that the evil exes are not just a group of wacky evil characters who are trying to stop Scott from dating Ramona, they are real people with real emotions and real feelings who feel like they were kind of, you know, basically written off by this dream girl of theirs. Yeah. Um, and so it's a lot of her dealing with that and apologizing for and helping people out, looking for forgiveness and reconciling differences and so on and so forth, which is really good. It's a good theme to have in a show like this. Um, that being said, it is on its own just a stellar anime, um, and it's got a lot of very, very cool and dynamically directed action scenes in it, um, but it is still very much Scott Pilgrim in its look and feel, which is awesome as well. So, if you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend it. I'm probably going to binge it this week and finish it, Hell but yeah. um, it is it is very, very good. A uh, random cool fact, because you are at the point where the movie's being made, the security guards uh, are voiced by Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. Yes, I definitely heard. When yeah. I heard them yeah. speak, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no way. So, yes, it is definitely them. And yeah. it's funny because their model, at least Nick Frost, like, character in it is almost on point. Like, it looks like him as a cartoon. <laughs> um, so, very good. Um, but moving on from Scott Pilgrim, the other thing I was talking about that I watched is has been hotels official Amazon series is out now. Um, for those of you who don't know, has been hotel was a project primarily headed by someone called Vivzy pop on YouTube and elsewhere. Um, and it is a show centered around denizens of a fictional hell. Um, and there's two series that she's made so far. One which is just running on YouTube called Hell of a Boss, which is also pretty good. Um, but Hasman Hotel was the one people were waiting for because it's got everyone's favorite character, Alistair, in it. Um, the radio demon. Um, there was some controversy between the pilot and the releasing of the Amazon show because a lot of the voice actors were changed by specifically by request from Amazon. We're going to hear Husker is Keith David now. Husker had an OG voice actor. Now he's just voice actor by Keith David. Probably just to get some name recognition and credit for the Amazon show. Um, <clears throat> uh, that being said, the show itself, I mean, the, the general synopsis is, so you have the daughter of hell, Charlie, or the daughter of Lucifer, Charlie, who is running a hotel that is trying to rehabilitate sinners and get them into heaven because every year heaven comes down with a bunch of exorcists and exterminates a bunch of people in hell to keep the population under control. Um, in episode one of all things, she speaks to Adam, meaning like the biblical Adam, who is now an angel in heaven and the leader of the, of the exorcist. Um, and he makes the decision to move up this extermination to a period of six months instead of a year. This means Charlie has six months to try to rehabilitate centers, prove her project works and get somebody into heaven. Um, She's joined by, of course, the cast of characters we know from the pilot. You've got Angel Dust, you've got Alistair, you've got her girlfriend, Vaggy, you've got Husker, the bartender, um, you've got Nifty, who is the maid, um, who is, Nifty is probably my favorite character. She's absolutely Kimiko! Yeah. Sorry, I just realized who, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the cast and I just came across Kimiko. Is, Kimiko Glenn is uh, Nifty. Yes, and Nifty is, Nifty is the definition of, like, gremlin energy. She is 
adorable but also terrifying at the same time. <laughs> um, I feel like that's a good description of Kimiko Glenn to begin with. <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, it, for me, it's a really good show because there is a mythos behind it. There's obviously a plot and a story happening. Um, it takes a lot of cues from other popular cartoons like Steven Universe, where it is kind of portrayed as a musical in certain parts. The, the big events where characters really have big discussions are mostly done through song. <laughs> Um, and the animation is great. The art style is great. Um, it's all very heavily inspired by what Vizzy Pop's vision for the show is still. So it's not like she's lost creative control of anything. She's still very much involved in it. Um, but all around just a really good cartoon, um, to watch on Amazon with a lot of that. They're really diving now into the lore behind this conflict between heaven and hell and, what all these demons are, what all these angels are, how they came to be, what their interactions are between each other. Um, and the last episode even confirmed one of the biggest th fan theories that's been running. <laughs> um, so just all around entertaining. Yes, it is crass. Yes, it is rude. Um, but that was kind of the goal from the beginning, both with has been hotel and hell of a boss. You have to realize that these are, we're dealing with, with beings who are not human especially the denizens of hell who just all around are terrible people who enjoy being terrible people and the denizens of heaven who just have unlimited and unchecked power most of the time. Um, Adam himself is probably the villain of the show. He is like the single worst person in the entire show. Um, and then there's mystery surrounding certain characters. Alistair has a big mystery surrounding him. So it's going to be interesting to discover those things. I think there's only maybe two or four more episodes slated to come out. So we have to wait one or two weeks until we get the finale. Okay. Hmm. Um, has it already been said whether or not it's getting another season or? I don't believe so. Uh, let me find out. Has been Hotel Season 2. Let's see. Has been Hotel Season 2 gets exciting update. When will it release? That sounds like one of those, like, there's actually not any real information, but we're saying it anyway. Yes. Well, has been told the revelation of ongoing recording sessions aligns with the prior update from the show's first trailer, confirming the continuation of the series with season two. Okay, well, that's I don't see anything official from Amazon, yeah, so exactly. I'm not going to say yes or no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, unless people are seeing actual things being recorded. You okay? Just heard a thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, unless actual things come out, you know, it's kind of up in the air. Um, I know people, I've seen a lot of people talk about it. I've seen it posted a lot. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I hope it does well, or I hope it does get, um, you know, more. Because yeah, things just need more in general, man. I'm getting tired yeah. of... Uh, shows that people love immediately fall in love with and have a, a following get canceled mm -hmm. um, no no series in particular we're talking about right now <laughs> um anyway uh well fuck man i think that's what you, you talked about that we talked about that that's yeah, yeah. everything we got that's everything we got well hey we're you know what I think after a long fucking first episode of the year, um, I think it's okay to have a semi-shortish episode for the, the, the year. I don't know. Yeah. Um, especially because we will be back next next Sunday. Uh, yes. We got to stay on track because otherwise mm -hmm. it interrupts my birthday and Kim's birthday. <laughs> I don't, Yours isn't on a Sunday, so you're fine. Yes. <coughs> huh. And hopefully next time, I won't sound like this. My birthday is on a Thursday this year. Ew. Ew. Um, nice Thursdays. Movie theaters. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Well, hey. Well, I'm dying. <laughs> Let's go over to our final segment of the show. No context recommendations. I see you already have one, you cheater. Yeah. So... My no context recommendation is Sam Claymore, spelled without an E at the end. 
I forgot that it's no context, so that's all you're going to say. Yep. <laughs> cool, cool. My no context recommendation, sorry, my brain broke on what the name of it was, so I had to double check it, uh, is Crypt Custodian. Crypt Custodian. Crypt. Custodian. Crypt. for the Crypt Keeper. Crypt Custodian, <laughs> which, by the way, I don't know if you've ever heard, I fucking love that game. Uh, but yeah, oh, Crypt I can Custodian. already see why. Shush, shush. No I'm not going to say anything. I just can see why you already love it. <laughs> Nate, I wish I had wrote up, written up this script so I could make you read it, because as, like I said, currently dying from the nose. Um, as always, if you like what you hear, what you see, what we do, you can follow us on all social media. Just search Space Time Taco. You can find me everywhere at Time Lord Brito. You can find him on Instagram. On Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> at a little teapot 89 or is it underscore fuck nope. me it's just 89 leslie is the one with the underscore leslie's the one with the underscore uh if you want to find leslie she's uh kimono underscore jones on instagram wait no i thought on instagram no, she's twitter just kim- yeah, yeah, on yeah, yeah instagram yeah, 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 she yeah. is kimono jones on twitter she is kimono underscore jones yeah 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 oh man i'm just saying guys consistency <laughs> <laughs> look it's <laughs> difficult when other people take your user i don't know um, i i'll be honest i don't know what what possessed me to just say if a social media exists get that username and it's just yeah. how that has been for me since i landed on this name um all the way back in the xbox days um i am glad that also, i changed it but whatever Let's say also if you're listening um a friend of the podcast dave and myself are still playing World of Warcraft. Um, and so if you want to join for us, you can look for us on the Bailgun server for World of Warcraft. And um, what I can also do, or what we can also do is add a whole WoW section to the Discord, which you can join through the link um, yep. somewhere. I think somewhere. it's on YouTube. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube. <laughs> I might include it in the thing below. Um that below, where it is, I don't know, but it's there. I promise you. Mm-hmm. Um, if you'd like to support us, you can support us directly through twitch.tv slash spacetime taco. Just, you know, throw us that fun subscription bucks. And hey, if you have mm-hmm. Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime, which unfortunately means we get less, but it still is a free subscription. Fuck you, Twitch, for saying, you know what? less for you um (laughs) no they seriously just put out a thing recently that if you are subscribed to by people using their amazon prime it is less for you now (laughs) yeah they get the same amount of money but they want Mm -hmm. more money now so eat a dick twitch um (laughs) yeah uh you can also support us through our patreon become a patron or as we call them, a friendship nacho. Um, I like friendship nachos. They're delicious. That sounds weird. I shouldn't say that out loud. Um, <laughs> I like nachos. What do you, What can I say? Uh, you can also support us through our Ko-Fi coffee bias. I think I have it. I think it's. I think it's because you can name it. I think it's queso. I think I have it set mm-hmm. where you bias queso. Um, okay. Me personally, it's Dr Pepper, but you know, whatever. Uh, I'm forgetting one, Nate. <laughs> Drinking straight queso out of the can. Um, <laughs> brain broken. Yep. You can buy us things. On throne. You can buy us things on throne. You can make these walls look prettier. Put things yes. to places. Put things behind me. Eventually. You can buy me a Steam Deck. <laughs> oh, you can buy, no, no, not that much. You can help fund a Steam Deck because you don't have to yes. outright buy a thing. You can make a little goal thing. Um, let's be honest. What he needs more than anything right now uh, is a Stream Deck. Yes. Not a Steam Deck. <laughs> <laughs> Both. Um, <laughs> no, I need a Stream Deck. Um, I need a. I need a house. Buy me a house. <laughs> no, no. You're not going to... The only way people will pay for you to have a house is if we were just making enough money that it converted to just paychecks. Uh, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. That is a future that is lofty and, and lovely. And who knows, maybe someday, somewhere, 
in a galaxy it. here, <laughs> it would happen. Um, but yeah, uh, as we said earlier, we are planning on streaming this week to help raise money for the PCRF, um, help us help the children of Palestine, um, help us by donating, help us by sharing, just help get the word out. Uh, yes. Yeah, um, and as always, uh, you, you, you go and play video games.